There you go. You don't have to leave the room. This is great conversation. I'm not leaving the room because you're live. You're leaving the room because you have to be. I'm leaving the room because I have to be. Hey, y'all. Come on in. Welcome, welcome. How y'all doing? Oh, let me turn my light up, Lord. It's... What y'all got going on today? Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm back in the building. In the building? No, let me stop. <laughs> How y'all doing? Y'all, it is time for tips, topics, and talk. How about that? Okay. So we're going to get into it. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Paulette. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things tonight. And I am excited to talk with you guys because number one, y'all already know what it is. We're going to be going over our planner for today, the handy dandy notebook, right? So come on in the room. We're going to give you guys a little bit of space to do that. In the meantime, we're going to let you listen to today's news from KCCR. You ready? Let's go. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres will meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in Moscow on Tuesday. For now, you know, all we have on the agenda is his working lunch and meeting with the Foreign Minister and then his uh, reception uh, later on uh, on the same day by uh, President Putin. You know, as he said in his letters to both presidents, um, he hopes to talk about what can be done to bring peace to Ukraine urgently um, and, you know, the, the the future of multilateralism as both countries are founding members. Eight people were killed, including a three-month-old girl and 18 wounded in a missile attack Saturday on the port city of Odessa on the Black Sea, Zelensky said in his evening address. Moscow's attempts to fully capture Mariupol have been slowed by Ukrainian resistance, according to an intelligence briefing from the UK's defense ministry early Saturday. French President Emmanuel Macron had a comfortable re-election win Sunday in a runoff offering France and the European Union the reassurance of leadership stability. TV French 24 was at Le Pen headquarters when she conceded. Lots of long faces at uh, the Rassemblement National's party here. You can see uh, behind me the screens, uh, a big crowd of supporters had uh, gotten uh, there right as that countdown happened. They counted down 10, 9, 8, and then when the result came in, the Emmanuel Macron had won. Big gasp in the crowd and then booze uh, when that final result came on up. But then I just spoke to some of the supporters behind me. They said, look, you know, it's progress. Poland and Ukraine have signed an agreement increasing cooperation in the railway transport sector, aiming to help Ukraine maintain its trade exchange with foreign countries as the Russian invasion affects its ports. Ukraine's Prime Minister and Poland's Premier met on Saturday in Krakow, Poland. They both agreed that current sanctions on Russia are insufficient which can be seen by the condition of the Russian currency, bonds, or inflation. This is the latest news headlines. European Union lawmakers agreed Saturday on a landmark law that would force tech giants such as Google and Meta to rid their platforms of hate speech and other forms of illegal content. The lawmakers reached a sweeping provisional political agreement on the Digital Services Act after hours of deliberation. The EU president called the agreement historic in a statement. A missing couple from Concord, New Hampshire, has been found shot to death on a remote walking trail after several days of searching. David Alexander reports. 67-year-old Stephen Reed and 66-year-old Jaswende Reed were last seen Monday when they left their home for a walk at about 2.22 p.m., according to the New Hampshire Attorney General's office. The Reeds were found shot to death on the broken ground trails on Thursday night. The shootings have been ruled homicides. Police say that they do not have a suspect or motive in the killings, and the investigation is ongoing. General Motors Korea said it aims to double its production in the next two years. Kyle Lawrence reports. The company, which rolled out around 237,000 vehicles last year, announced its plan last Wednesday to manufacture 500,000 automobiles next year. Toward that end, GM Korea is scheduled to expand its factories in the country and agreed with the trade union to relocate more than 1,200 workers by the end of this year. An explosion rocked an illegal oil refinery in southeastern Nigeria, state officials and police said. In Nigeria, an explosion at an illegal oil refinery depot has killed more than 100 people on Saturday. 
The incident happened in the country's oil-rich region of River State. Officials say the victims were burnt beyond recognition. The fire was reported to have spread to nearby properties. And that's the latest news headlines. I'm Alan Edwards. All right, so we have the news and information that you can use from KCCR Radio. That's Alan Edwards, and he does the news for us uh, currently for the Brownstone Center. And we are really grateful and thankful for what he is able to do for us. So we are very appreciative of that. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Tips, Topics, and Talk for the evening. Y'all come on in this room and let's get to talking. We are going to be going over the handy dandy notebook and getting an opportunity. Guys, let me tell you what I'm going to do because I'm on like five different platforms right now. I can see the likes and I can see people popping in, but I can't talk to you. So let me, uh, I'm going to go to my live feature and I'm going to pull you guys up because I want to be able to talk to y'all if I can, if I can, at least on some of my platforms. Okay. Because right now I'm live on YouTube. I'm live on like four or five different pages um, as we speak. And I want to make sure that I'm able to see all of you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this down. And I said, Coke set a spell for news. So it's come set a spell. Come set a spell. <laughs> so you guys, it's a lot of information that's happening right now. Y'all come on in this room. Let's set a spell. Let's talk. Welcome, welcome. You are watching your girl, Paulette. I am the host of the Day Shift. You, If you didn't catch the Day Shift this morning, you can go back and check out the replay. Um, it's also aired at the same time simultaneously on KCCR Radio, the Brownstone Center. You can do, go and check it out there. Um, 8 a.m. in the morning. It's an hour-long show. We get an opportunity to laugh, talk. We get an opportunity to talk about what's happening in the news. News. Ellen Edwards comes on and provides us with more news and information that you can use. And then also, we get an opportunity to come back on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and do tips, topics, and talk. So that is pretty cool. And what we're talking about today, you already know what it is. Welcome, welcome, everybody that is joining the live right now. Um, you know that on Mondays, we always do Money Mondays. Money Mondays. Super important for you guys to know because we talk about the things that are so important to all of us. So we're going to go over that today. And then the other thing that we're going to be talking about is the upcoming newsletter for May 2022, which is Brownstone Living. You can get your copy soon. Um, and it'll probably go out by Wednesday of this week. I misspoke a couple of weeks ago when we had a guest on and said that it was coming out that Wednesday, when in reality, it's the final Wednesday of the month that it comes out. Um, and so you'll get an opportunity to uh, get that in your hands. We're also going to talk about Brownstone Living and Essentials, and we're going to talk about the Brownstone Center and the Sunday Brunch, but then we're also going to talk about all of the new air personalities that are coming to KCCR. We actually have an onboarding program that is happening this evening for some of our air personalities. Then we're going to have another onboarding program uh, or class, rather, for those people who will be joining us, and that will be on Thursday. So we're doing two separate onboarding classes for people so they'll know how to load their shows, how to go live if they want to do that, um, and all of the things that are expected of them as you know for being a part of KCCR. So we want to talk to you guys about that as well. But, 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 since this is tips, topics, and talk, one of the things that we also like to do is, of course, give you guys a tip and talk about the hot topics. So, y'all, one of the things that I love to talk about is what is in the news. Why is that important? Because, because, because so much is happening right now, and there was a big business move that was made today. It was actually so big. It was so big. How big was it? that it, it pissed me off. It made me mad. I was like, what? I can't believe that. I cannot believe that so-and-so did X, Y, Z. Let me go ahead and plug myself up so my phone doesn't die. Here we go. So we're going to put this in over here, and we're going to continue with our conversation. So, y'all, listen. Let's get into it. Once again, it's your Paulette. I am the host of the syndicated radio show, The Sunday Brunch, and also KCCR's very own The Day Shift. If you missed it today, go ahead and check out the news on my personal reels and also at The Sunday Brunch. You can also check me out on TikTok, Instagram, and also on Beagle if you're there and tagged. So I'm pretty much everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So um, we're going to start first with news and information that you can use. 
which is always good to talk about. So let's get into it, y'all. Let's talk about the end of the day, end of the day. So this is midday. This is your drive time news. So if you just so happen to still be at work, if you just so happen to already be at home, if you work from home, this is a great way for you to grab some additional information if you would like. So reaction to here's the big news. Y'all ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Here's the big news. Elon Musk has purchased Twitter for $44 billion. Boom. Let that sink in. I am trying to be neutral because I understand that this is media and I'm trying my best not to get in my feelings because I'm not an Elon Musk fan. OK, so um, let's talk about what some of the reaction has been in terms of him actually uh, purchasing it. And he, he stood on his ground. I'm not mad at the guy. He can do what he wants to. He's a billionaire. You know what I mean? But at the same token, I have my concerns. Um, the reaction to Twitter and Elon Musk along party lines, an encouraging day for free speech or or is it a platform where only the loudest is going to be heard? That's a big question um, that definitely needs an answer. So everyone from free speech advocates to President Joe Biden and members of. Uh, let's see what it says here. So here's the thing. Con conservatives are actually excited about the acquisition. This is off of Market Watch, y'all. Others voice concerns that Twitter will soon be overcome by spam and garbage. And for anybody that knows, you all know that um, it's a really big deal uh, where, where Twitter stands. Because for a long time, it has been very instrumental in politics and, and in how people run their businesses. We have a lot of people that have become quite wealthy running their business through Twitter, especially when Periscope was a part of it and you could connect to it and so forth and you could start going live. Because y'all know Periscope kicked it off along with Meerkat and then Periscope got bought out by Twitter. And I was on Periscope for a very long time. Um, actually from their inception up until, and I started on Meerkat, Meerkat was like, meh, and then here came Periscope, and so it became a part of Twitter. So I used Twitter um, to connect with my my um, my audience base. I was one of the few people that wasn't scared to go live, and I'm still not, but let's see what everyone is saying. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to let you guys hear what the folks is saying. I don't want y'all to hear it from me. And then when we come back, I want to share, let's talk about it just for a minute. Y'all ready for this? Let's go. And of course, you know, it's going to be a commercial on it. So don't reaction to Twitter and must split along party lines an encouraging day for free speech for a platform where only the loudest can be heard by John Swartz, April 25th, 2022, 4.54 PM Eastern time. Everyone from free speech advocates to President Biden and members of the Senate had an opinion on Twitter Incorporated's board agreeing to accept Elon Musk's bid for the company. Not surprisingly, the comment seemed split based on political ideology Monday. Musk's laissez-faire views on content moderation and pointed criticism of alleged right-leaning censorship on Twitter elicited a tidal wave of strong views on the direction of information and voices on social media. Creating a free-for-all with no content moderation will leave us with a platform where only the loudest can be heard, including powerful state actors or those who pay for influence, said Nabiha Syed, CEO of news site The Markup, who warned the acquisition could drive away droves of members because of Musk's push for less moderation on Twitter. What about marginalized communities who are targeted for harassment? Who will be looking out for their speech interests? The news, Twitter agrees to be bought by Elon Musk for $44 billion. Brooke Aaron Duffy, Associate Professor of Communication at Cornell University and co-author of a new book, Platforms and Cultural Production, researches the intersection of media, culture, and technology. She's concerned marginalized communities of users are especially vulnerable to the forms of hate. So let's talk about that just for a minute. Now, this... Um information here so i'm gonna start because she re she's reading so dry so clearly that's an ai that's reading brooke aaron duffy associate professor of communication at cornell university and co-author of a new book platforms and cultural production researches the intersection of media culture and technology here's her concern she's concerned marginalized communities of users are especially vulnerable to the forms of hate 
and harassment that so often circulate in unregulated online spaces. So let's talk about that. Black Twitter, that is all. I want to see what Black Twitter is talking about today. I want to see. So where Musk takes Twitter is anyone's guess at this point. But should the outspoken billionaire deregulate the microblogging platform in his quest as a free speech absolutist? It could thwart its current commitment to ensuring that all people can participate in the public conversation freely and safely. That, no doubt, has the attention of the Beltway, which has vowed a crackdown on anti-competitive business practices by big tech, but engaged in a fiercely partisan debate over what constitutes free speech and information on digital platforms. The president has long been concerned about the power of large social media platforms. We all should be, right? The power they have over our everyday lives has long argued that tech platforms must be held accountable for the harms they cause, White House Press Secretary Jim Psaki said during a brief shortly after the announcement. So from the opposite end of the spectrum, Senator Marsha Blackburn, who's actually a rep uh, Republican, not surprised, from Tennessee, praised the Twitter board's decision to agree to Musk's takeover offer. Today is an encouraging day for freedom of speech. I am hopeful that Elon Musk will help rein in big tech's history of censoring users that have a different viewpoint. So here is where I have my concern. When we're talking about having a different viewpoint, we already know that social media can impact culture. It impacts resources. It impacts um, uh, different cultures and communities. And it impacts the way that people are generating money. All of that stuff is on um, the table when it comes to this particular acquisition. So this is just the tip of the iceberg, I believe. And we're going to see more as uh, the weeks and months go along to see exactly what his mindset is. Because at this point, if they talking about just outright selling it to this guy, what does that look like? Is he going to be the only one that has the last and final say? How does that look? And so that's where I think I have my questions and my concerns. Um, and let's see, um, that Musk, the world's richest person, and Tesla, which is actually down today by about 0.70%, would draw such conflicting responses is not surprising. He routinely issues bombastic comments himself, whether in jest or out of spite, to ruffle corporate feathers. Yes, he does. But the dangers of unmoderated speech could quickly lead to a platform overcome by spam and garbage. And that's another thing that I was thinking about. I was like, mm, you do something like that for a platform that's been around as long as Twitter has, and it's allowing you an opportunity to say what you want, how you want, without any risk or recourse for what you're going to say. That can be very damning and damaging to businesses and also to yourself, right? So let's stop and think about that for just a second. When we're talking about um, putting ourselves out there um, just like this, just like this platform right here. So I am currently live on six different platforms as we speak right now. And I have to be very calculated in what I say and how I say it. Number one, because I have a social responsibility to be careful what comes out of my mouth, because whether or not I want to believe it, I am an influencer of sports. Okay. Here's the other thing. We have to be careful because there's a lot of, um, Fake news, I sound like Donald Trump himself, but fake news that's out there, uh, misinformation that is provided by several different sources on the internet. And we have to be careful with the uh, kinds of information that we're providing because people have, have lost their lives. People have made poor decisions based upon, you know, conspiracy theories and things like that that are out there and um, have always been proven to be false, but they believe what they want to believe and people lose in the end. So we want to make sure that we're being careful with that. I don't know what that looks like long-term, but what I do know, first of all, like I said before, I'm not a Musk fan. I don't even like the car, but it doesn't matter what I like and it doesn't matter that I'm not a fan. I'm not the one with the 40, 44 billion that's just floating around, right? I'm not the one that's going to the moon when I want to, you know what I'm saying? And so because of that, we have to be very, very careful how we communicate uh, things online. And here's the thing that we know about Twitter. Twitter only allows you 140 characters to say what you're going to say. So you got to get in and you got to get out. You got to be careful how you use punctuation and so forth. Yes, you can go live on the platform. And I'm sure that we'll see several different changes coming down the pipe in, in terms of how the platform will be used. But if I ever want quick news, if I want to 
find out what black Twitter is talking about and the influence that the platform itself has, I go to TikTok. I get in, I get out because it provides me exactly what I'm looking for. Do I post often? Absolutely not. No, because I don't get a lot of engagement over there. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time where I don't, you know, garner the followers. I don't follow. I don't garner um, the viewerships and things of that, that nature and including the sales. So I don't, I don't spend a lot of time on there. Now, um, the other concern is, is that that kind of platform wouldn't work for anyone, whether whatever their political views, because over time, it's going to become juxtaposed to a bunch of different noise. And it's going to be like clattering of pots and pans and buckets and everything else, because everybody is going to be vying for the eyeballs. And that's a concern, especially when we're talking about somebody that just outright said, here, here's $44 billion. That's creepy to me, just a little bit, only because what do you want to be said, Mr. Musk? What you going to say? What you going to allow folks to say on officially now? I'm sure once the paperwork and everything is done officially now, what are you going to allow people to say on your platform? Those are things that are of a concern for me. Right. OK. And so moving on towards. Um, Let's see. So here we are. They're also talking about. Hi, KJ. Hey, How are you? I like that hat. I sure appreciate that. Y'all see my hat? That hat is clean, boy. You see that? <laughs> so anyway, um, back to what I was talking about. So basically what people are saying is the same. That kind of platform wouldn't work for anyone, whatever their political views. Then again, the free speech debate may have simply been a distraction for Musk to acquire control of what he sees as a company that can dramatically increase in value, according to Aaron Solomon, chief legal analyst for Esquire Digital, who predicted Musk's takeover bid would be accepted by Twitter's board. It would be very surprising if Elon Musk did anything, especially in the short term, to jeopardize the value of Twitter. Well, we're getting ready to find out because um, we were just having a conversation here in the house about it. And I'm, I, you know what? I, I don't have any skin in the game. I just know that I have read comments that he has made and he's, he's very open about where he stands with certain things. Um, and, and, and they're not all things that I agree with. I don't even consider myself to be conservative either at all. Far from that. Right. Okay, so Solomon is convinced Musk will make plenty of changes soon to evolve and monetize Twitter, including a long overdue edit button as well as premium versions at perhaps two to three dollars a month. I knew that was coming. So here's something else. A lot of your. Y'all. Listen. You better not get them lucky charms. I'm telling you. Boy, just the best one. Okay, okay. That, uh, KJ, that, that lower line. Okay, all, all right. Okay, so anyway, enough of that. So, um, indeed, if Musk decides to, Are you, is he, is my son done y'all? Okay, so let's finish talking about if Musk decides to loosen content moderation policies, some brands might be reluctant to advertise on a platform containing risky content or disinformation and instead go to other platforms, which I could absolutely see happening. So there are companies that are a little bit concerned. I'm a company, even though I'm a small company, I'm still concerned. And even though I don't use the platform like that, like I said, I just go in there, grab my news and information and I carry on. Everybody is not like me. OK, so um, some people are just going to get down and they're going to be like, "Ooh, let's go over there and kick up dust. Let's kick up some noise. Because, again, you got to remember, Trump was banned. Is that ban going to stand? Now, from what I'm understanding, they're already you know, lifting the ban on certain folks. How true that is, I don't know. Right. So a significant swath of Americans believe Musk will cause Twitter to allow greater free speech on the platform, 40 percent, and improve the quality of discussions on the platform. 40%, according to an uh, Ipsos poll conducted April 4th through the 5th of 1,000 Americans ages 18 and over. So there you go. I, I personally, I don't know. I personally think that um, we're, we're just going to have to sit it out and find out exactly what's the deal. 
you know, um, it has its, it has its drawbacks. It has its things, I guess. But at the end of the day, this, this man knows exactly what he wants and he, and he bought it $44 billion, $44 Wait, billion. He bought, he bought Twitter. What do you mean? I know he was going by it, but yeah, Elon Musk bought Twitter, $44 billion, $44 billion. $44 billion they accepted his offer. Yes, they so did. Elon Musk now owns Tesla and Twitter and uh, SpaceX. Yeah, he does. Incredible. So look what just got released, y'all. Y'all ready for this? Oh, I didn't know this was going to be all about this man. But listen, he actually is releasing a statement. If you want to check it out later, head on over to the Brownstone Center and also the Day Shift Academy for more information about what he said. I just shared it with you guys. But let's take a look at what he is talking about now. This dude looks like he, ooh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Let's take a look and see what he's talking about. Because I want to see. I want to see. I want to see what we're covering. Yes. Okay. Elon Musk says he wants to make Twitter better than ever. Elon said in a statement Monday that he wants to make Twitter uh, better following the announcement that his bid to acquire the company was accepted. Free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy and Twitter is the digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated. He continues, I also want to make sure Twitter better to make, I also want to make Twitter better than ever by enhancing the product with new features, making the algorithms open source to increase trust, defeating the spam bots and authenticating all humans. I can dig that because Twitter is full of bots. So is Instagram, so is TikTok, so is Facebook. The bots are out there. So I get that part. Twitter has tremendous potential. It does. I look forward to working with the company and the community of users to unlock it. Okay, that actually is a post that he made at about 3.45 this afternoon. Okay, so Twitter CEO will hold all hands meeting with staff um, today. That was actually announced 59 minutes ago, um, talking about what has happened. Following news that Twitter had agreed to sell itself to Elon Musk, the company's stock was up nearly 6%. 6% hovering around $51.84, just shy of the actual offer price. If approved by shareholders and regulators, the deal will put the world's richest man in charge of one of the world's most influential social media platforms. Musk has repeatedly, stre repeatedly stressed in recent days that his goal is to bolster free speech on the platform and work to unlock Twitter's um, extraordinary potential. Why am I bringing this up right here? If, if approved by shareholders. Y'all, Imani, did you hear what I just said? Yeah. If approved by shareholders and regulators. I absolutely, I, I actually can't see it being approved by the shareholders and the regulators, but we're going to see. So let's keep an eye on this because what this is going to do is it's going to open up the door for other platforms to... Um, kind of go through the same thing okay so let's look into that that's the hot topic for today i honestly just wanted to carry that with you guys and um share it with you all and say you know what that's a lot that is a lot all right so let's get into money mondays money mondays is a place where we actually sit down and we talk about what are the things that you need to do when it comes to your money every week have you looked at what you spent? Let me tell y'all something. I looked at what I spent over the weekend. <laughs> oh my God. That's all I have. <laughs> but here's the thing. Make sure that when you are looking at your money, that it definitely is enough for you to budget out for your bills and budget out for anything additional that you might have spent over the weekend. It's always good to start your Monday fresh with an idea of what your monetary goals are for yourself. Now, let's talk about that in perspective. One of the things that I like to do and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to share with you guys on my link tree, which is the link in my, my personal bio. I'm going to be providing you guys with information on what you can do on your Money Mondays. Money Mondays is basically about reconciling your, your bank accounts, your checking accounts, your savings, whatever you have, and making sure that you are on task. So in order for you to be on task, 
you have to have a goal, which means that you usually should start with a budget. Now, Jeanette Barnett, who actually came on live with me and we made an apple cobbler here in the Brownstone Kitchen, discussed budgeting with us in detail. If you want more information about budgeting and what that would look like for yourself, make sure that you go over to mybrownstoneliving.com and you register for the newsletter, okay? That way, when it comes out on Wednesday, the May edition, you'll be able to read up on some things that you can do to make this easier for yourself as you are um, making better decisions about your money. So one of the things that we do is I run reports on Mondays, and that would be reports from last week that I might have missed in terms of KCCR, the brownstone, I want to see where we are. And that's important because if you have no idea where you currently are and you're not looking at your insights or your pixels, you're not looking at the reports that are sent to you by the companies that you are doing business with and you're paying your hard earned money from, you don't know what your plan of action should be. Of course, you've already planned out your month or the entire quarter. You know what campaigns that you're going to offer. But at the same time, you don't know what happened yesterday on your platform. You don't know what happened on um, your Facebook pages or anything like that because you didn't go behind the scenes to look at your reports. You don't know how many people actually responded to your video over your static post. Okay. Every single social media platform has some kind of reporting mechanism that's a part of it. And I do encourage you to get familiar with it. Do some research on YouTube University to find out how to discern what your reports are telling you when we're talking about Facebook, especially since Facebook is changing so much. It would be good for you to do that. Why is that important? Because when you have a campaign, listen closely, folks, when you have a campaign that you are trying to run, you need to know what best will work for your audience type. So if your audience type is the type that really prefers videos over static posts, you need to look at your reports to find out what's going to work for you so you can adjust accordingly to drive more traffic to your off-site platforms and to increase those sales. You need to be able to look at what it's going to take for you to create the correct verbiage that you need in your landing pages, your sales pages, and also on your websites. And even in your link tree um, uh, platform, that would be a really good thing to do. The reason why this is important and why we look every day, because even though I have campaigns in place right now, I know that looking at the platform reports, it's going to indicate to me on Instagram, do I need to run more reels? Or should I focus more on static posts? Should I go live on this particular platform? Or will I be okay doing it this way? So those are some things that you want to make sure that you're asking yourself. Here's something else. One other thing that Jeanette Barnett talked about, and she's a part of the cultivatedseed.org. You can definitely go and check her out. The cultivatedseeds.org. She is a certified money coach. And she's a money expert with over 15 years of um of finance and money and banking in her wheelhouse. And you definitely want to take somebody like that to heart because when I tell you she and I have sat down and had conversations about money and what she learned working in the banking industry, my mouth is still open. It's like that, right? So hopefully she'll be able to share information with us on future podcasts and on vlogs and stuff like that. You'll be able to um, get that information directly from her. Okay. So did you run your reports today? Do you know what your business brought in today? Did you have goals set up to see if you could surpass what you did last week? Are you set up for success this week? So, so when we're talking about Money Mondays, we want to make sure that we are clear on what it is that we want to do with, with our money and what we want to accomplish. So one of the things that I definitely want to put out here is the fact that we do have multiple streams of income and even I have to figure out how to get better and making sure that all of them are balanced and that we know exactly which ones are doing well and which ones aren't and be able to pivot where we need. One of the other things that I have recently learned is learning how to launch the product and we want to see how it's doing. We want to analyze. And then we want to go back and we want to optimize whatever it is that we put in place. 
that would also be for your personal business as well. So your home accounts, your, your accounts that pay your mortgage or your car note, your rent or whatever that you may have for your living expenses. Do you have a budget in place for that? And are you able to stick to that as best as you can, right? So is there money for the mortgage? Is there money for food? Is there money for entertainment if you have to have it? What about your car note or your insurance? Do you have enough financial resources put aside to number one, take care of your daily expenses, your weekly expenses, and your monthly expenses? What about paying down debt? What does that look like? Have you assessed whether or not you need to bring in additional streams of income? Here's my rule of thumb. Yes. Period. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we're doing right now is we are clearing out our store so that we can start getting new products in for you guys. That is crazy important. We have assessed, we have done the homework, we know what works, we know what doesn't, and we're ready to pivot and provide to you all the products and services that you have told us that you want. So that's all we're doing is we're listening to what you would like from the Brownstone Center. OK, so my Brownstone Living and Essentials is going to be offering you home goods, home decor that you'll be able to purchase and put inside of your home to make it your own special place and say welcome home to the people that will be visiting you or who already live there. You want to make it a warm, inviting place. And y'all already know we got the cookware stuff that's coming. So we're excited about that. So when we're talking about our money, make sure that in your planner, in your planner, you do have a space for your weekly money. Now, what I do, some people don't have to do this. There are these little pockets in here and you can put money in it. You know, I don't. I use it for other stuff for like notes or whatever. But some people use their pockets right here. Like I keep our vaccination cards because I carry the sucker everywhere with me. Y'all like, why don't you just because I do. I actually have it screenshot, but I just keep it in here in case anybody wants to see the real deal. You could put your... um your money stuff here. So these are um, items that stickers and stuff that I use for budgeting. Okay. But I'm not putting no money in here. All right. So do keep that in mind. Do keep that in mind. Okay. All right. Now that was your tip for today. What else are we going to do? I'm going to make sure that we do like a little sheet and we're going to provide it for you guys and you'll be able to download it. That will be in the newsletter. How do you get the newsletter? MyBrownstoneLiving.com. You can go ahead and register so that you can get your copy for May. For May. There we go. So there it is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Hey, everybody, come on in. I see that there are several of you guys that are um, coming in on different platforms. So thank you for joining us. It's your girl Paulette. We are here in the Brownstone Kitchen. That's what I like to call it. And we are doing tips, topics, and talk. Now, on Mondays, I normally do not cook because we are going through our planning phases. We're talking about money and we're talking about the big monster in the room today, which is Elon Musk has um, the go from Twitter to purchase it for $44 billion. But of course it has to get through the shareholders and the other folks that um, want to make sure that this is right. So shareholders and regulators have to actually approve it. So we'll see what happens with that. But his, his thought process is, is um, with, with significant change, Twitter can actually be better and be impactful in, in a lot of things. So we're, we're going to see where that takes us. Um, again, like I said, I'm not a, a Musk fan. I don't like the car. Um, and, and I think he's a, he's very brazen, but you can be when you got billions of dollars, you know, because you can just hire somebody to get you off the hook. That's my personal opinion. I'm sticking to that. All right. Okay. Now, tips, topics, and talk. Here's what we're going to be doing tomorrow, 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 guys. Come and hang out with me tomorrow. We're going to be doing more news and information that you can use. And then on Wednesday, 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 I have already been working on what I am going to be cooking for you guys on Wednesday. I'm excited about this. Let me tell you why. Because I'm going to use some products that I already have in-house. We're going to make country-style pork ribs with collard greens, potatoes, and sliced apples. We're also going to be using some breadcrumbs with that and some other ingredients. I want to make sure that um, 
you guys don't miss that. We're not going to take a lot of time with it. We're going to get in and get out of the kitchen. So that will be on Wednesday. You will see me make braised country short ribs and collards with potatoes and apples. Why am I doing that? Because I'd like to try anything once. I want to see what collard greens and apples are like together. How about that? And not just because it's pretty. Because you know I'm going to take video. I'm going to take pictures. I'm going to do it all. And I want to see what it's going to look like. So that will be on Wednesday. And then on Friday, we'll go live again. And we'll just, you know, live talk, kiki, answer some questions. Um, and we'll also bring on a couple of our air personalities so that you guys can chat with them as well. Um, last week, um, one of the new air personalities actually went live on their personal page to announce that they will be joining KCCR. And their name is Nikima E. Nikima E and Tea Time went live. And you guys do not want to miss her show because she's going to be talking about love and relationships. She's going to be talking about hot topics and she's going to be sharing the tea with you all, honey. Okay. So you'll be able to check it out live on the Brownstone Center. And you'll also be able to check out the, the, the voice version of the show on KCCR, and it will air every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You don't want to miss it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to have her on KCCR. And the following week, Cullen's Corner is returning. We are excited about this. Um, we have a lot of things that we're going to be covering when it comes to Cullen's Corner um the corner family is getting back together and we're going to be sharing again with you it's called cullen's corner hot topics so if you have hot topics that you want to be um discussed during the show of course you will reach out to contact at the brownstonesound.com i should actually have that up there but i don't okay so contact at the brownstonesound.com if you want your hot topics uh, love and relationship questions, things of that nature, discussed uh, on Cullen's Corner. The very first Cullen's Corner for 2022 will be airing on May 5th. May 5th. That is Cinco de Mayo. So bring whatever liquor you're going to be drinking and come and join us. If you don't drink like I don't drink, bring your juice, okay? I got some, I got some water right here. We're going to be doing it up. And this is vitamin, I think it's B or something in here or whatever. But uh, get your ice water, do whatever you're going to do. Cheers. How about that? Okay. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to definitely go over with you guys was the fact that KCCR is currently looking for additional air personalities. Okay. What does that mean? If you want to do a 30 minute or a 60 minute show, you should absolutely inbox me directly or you can leave a message um, on the page. We're going to have our landing page up probably by end of day today, probably tomorrow, but you'll be able to register. We had a little hiccups with the first page, but you definitely want to reach out to us if you want to be a part of the platform, okay? Because we want to make sure that we're the voice of um, this generation and the voice of this urban virtual generation. And I think that that's imp important or impertinent, depending on what part of the country that you are from. So um, those are the things that we are um, looking forward to. Now, let's talk about, let's get into, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do this live here, but what I am going to tell you guys is um, this is for fitness. This is my, these are my sheets for fitness. And then these are my sheets for my regular work day. And if you guys can see this, this is kind of, oh, y'all can't see that at all. God, oh, okay, that's better. So this is a, a spread. This is a one page spread right here. And this is just Monday through Wednesday. This is filled out from last week. What I'm going to do is do a reel for you guys so you can actually see how I put these together. And then maybe I'll go live a little bit later and, and we, let you guys kind of look and see how. Um, I put together a spread for the entire work week so that I don't miss anything. And I think that that's important because y'all probably like, well, you talk about it all the time. You just don't go live and show us what you're doing. Okay, well, we're going to do that. All right. So this is important as well. Um, right now, we've got more news information that you can use that will be coming in the morning for KCCR. So I don't want you guys to miss that either. Right now, what is playing on KCCR? Let me look and see. Because I can actually see. Uh, Cameo. Oh, 
That's old school. But I know between the hours of 5 and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we actually do a mixture of new school and old school songs so that everybody can get, you know, a, a, a touch of flavor. Eventually, these are going to be phased out with talk and with um, news and information that you can use on a regular basis. There will be some music, but we're going to minimize that and start allowing that to fall to the back so that we can focus more on um, allowing people that have a voice that want to be heard and you want to try other platforms outside of the standard where you're probably not going to be found, you can come over to KCCR. Is it expensive? Oh my God, no. Not at all. Not at all. Not for the things that we are offering. And there are several different tiers that are and will be available. And we want to talk more and more about that getting into the month of May and June. We think it's important for you guys to hear us out when it comes to that. All right. So what are we talking about now? I think that's it. That's all we got. I've been on here for 45 minutes and 49, 50 seconds. So um, we're going to wrap it up and uh, follow me on Reels. Go ahead and follow the Brownstone Center, Brownstone Living and Essentials, which is our chronicling of what we're doing with Brownstone Living and Essentials, and also your Butter Bar, and where we are with our physical store. That's going to be a lot of fun because, because we're actually getting, I'm getting comfortable sharing with y'all the stuff that we do to make this sucker run. And lastly, the Sunday brunch. Okay, so we are going to be having some hot topics this week with that. And it's really not a hot topic. You just want to make sure that you don't miss the conversation that is going to be had in regards to that. So up next this week is Love, Live, Breathe Your Life. You don't want to miss that on Sunday. Okay, it's a new episode, so you don't want to miss it. And uh, that's all I have for you guys tonight in, in, in terms of tips, topics, and talk. Go ahead and like the page. That's my personal page here. You can follow me here. You can follow us at the Brownstone Center and also Brownstone Living and Essentials. Don't forget the Sunday brunch as well. Um, we're going to come back tomorrow and let's chat in the morning over coffee, shall we? All right, three things that I always like for you to do. You know what they are. Love your life. You only get one. You might as well embrace it. Live your life to the fullest because in the end, you're not going to make it out alive. And number two, there are experiences that need hugs and you might as well be the one to do the hugging. And lastly, breathe through every single moment. That's right. You got it. Love, live, breathe this experience. You guys, I will see you tomorrow. And in the meantime, go ahead and download the KCCR radio, the Brownstone Living app. Listen in and join us for more from other air personalities, just like myself, in the upcoming weeks. We'll see you later. Good night.